Let's go! Has this ever happened to you? You're meeting somebody new, they introduce themselves, and then five seconds later, you can't remember their name. Wouldn't it be great if the brain had some sort of storage system to avoid this? Like, what if every time someone new tells you their name, your brain writes it down on a piece of paper, puts it in a box, labels the box, and stores it away. Then if you ever need the name, you can just use the label to retrieve the box, open it up, and voila! You have the name and now you can use it. If you programmed a computer, like a robot, to remember people's names, it would do something like this. The brain box I mentioned acts just like a variable. In programming, a variable is like a container that stores a value. The value in this example is a string of letters that together help you identify someone. In coding, a name is what we call a string. No, it's not like the one on your shoe. This is a type of value stored in a variable that is made up of characters, words, phrases, or symbols. Just like all variables have values that can change, or vary, a person's name can change too. Do you have any nicknames? Maybe your family or friends all call you something different. No matter what someone calls you, you still have a name. The value of your name can change, but it won't change anything else about you. A lot of games keep track of players' names. Here, take a look at Fuzztopia. There is your name right there, as a string. Games can also track other pieces of information that might change or vary as you play, like the background, the characters, and colors. All of these variables represent string values. The Fuzz family is learning all about strings too, just like you are right now. The Fuzz family loves to explore the universe, but sometimes they run into this huge asteroid field. They can see asteroids of all different colors, like green, red, and yellow. How will they get through? The fuzzes know that in code, each color that you see is actually written out as a string of text, and they can use these strings to clear the asteroid field. You can help the fuzzes too. Start by looking at the values or colors of the asteroids. I see purple. Then choose a matching colored fuzzball. This means one with the same string value, purple. Tap the fuzzball to load the blaster, and then tap to aim at an asteroid of the same color. If the fuzzball string meets with an asteroid of equal value, they will both clear and the fuzzes can pass through. Now that you've seen variables in Asteroidia, what do you think? Why are strings so important in game design? Take a moment to reflect or discuss. When you use variables to store string values in a program, you are often controlling the output, or what the user sees. For instance, let's say one of our programmers at Codable wanted to change what blue fuzz's eyes look like. A programmer could go into the code, find the eyes variable for blue fuzz, and edit the value from blue to alien. This would instantly change the appearance of blue fuzz's eyes, and what all players, including you, would see in Codable. When you design your own game, you will be able to control things like this. Strings are so powerful. What will you code next?